The armed forces are now at the forefront of India's battle against COVID-19 along with doctors. Indian Air Force has just picked up four cryogenic oxygen containers from Singapore to in an effort to overcome the ongoing oxygen crunch in the country. These oxygen tankers are expected to land at Bengal's Panagar later this evening and from there they will be transported to different parts of the country with the oxygen. So eight empty cryogenic oxygen containers have already been lifted from Begumpet to Bhuvneshwar in Odisha uh, by the C-17 aircraft. To deal with this ongoing crisis, the Ministry of Defence has also sanctioned emergency financial powers to Armed Forces Medical Service to battle the surge. This, as Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh, along with the Chiefs of the Army, Navy and Air Force and the Chief of Defence Staff, reviewed efforts by the Ministry of Defence to deal with the COVID crisis and to come to aid of the civil establishment. I quickly want to cut across to India today's Abhishek Bhalla. Abhishek, the armed forces at this point of time are battling the COVID crisis on multiple fronts. You have the armed forces that are deployed at the line of control, the line of actual control, counter-terror operations, looking after their own personnel and diverting resources to Russian oxygen and oxygen tankers. Bring us details. Huge effort, uh, Gaurav, uh, by the armed forces, uh, be it the armed forces medical service uh, or personnel uh, from uh, uh, the Indian Army as well as the Indian Air Force. The Indian Air Force till now had been carrying out uh, operations within the country, uh, uh, you know, airlifting uh, medicine, uh, equipment, personnel, and even uh, oxygen containers. But now we have had the first flight from Singapore uh, to India, which will land uh, in a few hours from now, uh, carrying those uh, oxygen uh, uh, tankers, which will augment and quicken up uh, the supply across the country. Because remember, uh, there is oxygen available in the country, but the problem is an acute shortage of these tankers because of which the transportation becomes extremely slow. Other than Singapore, there are also plans uh, for the Air Force uh, to uh, airlift uh, these tankers from UAE. Those operations are likely to happen soon as well. So once all these things uh, take place, all these material come in, we can ex expect some uh, change as far as the oxygen supply in the country is concerned. The army is concerned, uh, the armed forces are concerned. Abhishek, uh, quickly before I let you go, uh, at this point of time, we are also told that 23 uh, oxygen generators are being um, acquired, are being procured from Germany. How soon will these uh, oxygen generators be picked up from Germany and where, where are they likely to be deployed? Uh, well, Gaurav, uh, the, the announcement was uh, made yesterday and it will take another five to six days for those uh, plants uh, to, uh, come to, in, 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 to come to India. And once uh, that happens, these 23 oxygen plants uh, will be uh, used in all hospitals being run by the defense establishment. So uh, these, these could be the DRDO uh, set up uh, COVID hospitals. Other than that, uh, the military hospitals uh, that uh, are also uh, packed as of now with COVID patients, uh, uh, they will be used there as well. Abhishek Bhalla, for the moment, many thanks for joining me. And I spoke to Surgeon Vice Admiral Rajat Datta, Director General of the Armed Forces Medical Service on the role that the armed forces are playing at this point of time in the battle against COVID-19 and how the armed forces are keeping their personnel safe from COVID. What are the best practices adopted by the armed forces and can they be replicated by all of us? The armed forces have joined the fight against coronavirus as the second wave sees a huge spike. Indian Air Force aircraft moving oxygen tankers, men, material, medicines. The DRDO has set up additional COVID facilities. Army, Navy and Air Force doctors and medical staff are providing urgent medical attention. Joining me on India today is Surgeon Vice Admiral Rajat Datta, Director General of the Armed Forces Medical Services. Admiral, welcome on India today. The Armed Forces, Admiral, have for decades... They have the experience of setting up field hospitals. Where all are you setting up these hospitals and what are the facilities, sir? Uh, thank you, Gaurav, first of all, for inviting me. Uh, we are uh, at the moment putting up hospitals in various uh, locations across the country. First of all, we have put up in uh, Delhi, uh, the DRDO hospital in near the Timan area. 
uh, more hospitals are coming up in Ahmedabad, Lucknow, Varanasi, Prayagraj, Patna, in that way. And all these hospitals, will they be like the one in Delhi uh, with ICU beds and oxygen supply everywhere? Yes, so far it appears like that only. Um, the all state of art facilities, ICU beds, ventilators, monitors, everything. Sir, last year, 1,000 bed hospital had been set up in the national capital. But if I remember correctly, less than 400 were occupied. How is the situation so different this year? Like the day you set up this 250 bed hospital uh, in the in, near the airport, within a couple of hours, there, there were huge queues and every bed was occupied. You're absolutely right, uh, uh, Gaurav. Last year, when we started this hospital, in the first month, uh, overall in 30 days, we admitted about 50 to 70 patients only. And this time, as you said, in the first two hours of its opening, the hospital got swamped with 250 critically ill patients. So the uh, we are well aware that this time around, the wave is very strong. It's like a tsunami. The virus has become very infectious. It is moving around rapidly from one individual to another. Positivity rates are very high, and that's why we're seeing such huge numbers. How bad has Corona hit our armed forces, sir, in the second wave? Uh, fortunately, uh, armed forces have been uh, doing very well so far, and I hope that it continues to remain this way. Our numbers are much, much less compared to the national numbers, uh, even when they're adjusted for the locations. The uh, Our numbers have been largely in our, around sec low two-digit numbers, high two-digit numbers, or very low three-digit numbers. Okay. And what's the reason for this? Because when you see Delhi, when you see uh, Mumbai or other parts of the country where cases have just surged and you see the hospital facilities are overwhelmed, how is army... Uh, or the armed forces, how have they been able to save themselves from the tsunami? I think there are two basic reasons. The first reason being that we are a disciplined force and the uh, appropriate behavior for COVID, that is the social distancing, hand washing, masking, is followed diligently across uh, the entire armed forces. The second reason being that we have carried out our vaccination program with uh, great alacrity. At the moment, nearly entire uh, armed forces personnel are immunized with both the shots. Okay. And in your appreciation, because they've all been vaccinated, it helps and how? Vaccination definitely helps. And as I said, today we have administered close to 27 million uh, doses of COVID shield. And uh, the, uh, what we call it as vaccine breakthrough, that means those who have received full doses of uh, vaccine, and say about two weeks after that, those who have developed any kind of COVID-like symptoms, then total number at the moment is around 700. Mild, most of them are mild, a few of them are moderate, which means that the vaccine is extremely efficient in making sure that the individual doesn't land up in hospital, doesn't land up in ICU. Nearly 99% effectiveness we are seeing on ground. That's indeed very heartening to hear. So you would strongly recommend vaccination uh, when it starts for everyone above the age of 18 from the 1st of May? Absolutely. See, most of our armed forces are young uh, people. And if they're doing well, why, I see no reason why the common man on the, in the streets, uh, young people, why would they not have similar effects? Admiral, what are the best practices of the armed forces in your view that general public can also adopt? I think, first of all, we have to be very clear that we have this enemy and we have to recognize it and respect it because this virus will seize, will, will lose no opportunity to attack us. And therefore, we need to be absolutely diligent, absolutely strict uh, about um, social distancing, about uh, making sure that your mask is worn properly all the time, about hand washing. We have to be absolutely religious about it. Okay. Those who get infected, those who get impacted, how many of them, in your view, will reach hospital? How many of them, in your view, would require critical care? That is another big myth which is going around. And uh, because of the panic-like situation, people are reacting a little, uh, I would say, a bit overboard. Out of 100 individuals who will get corona, not 85 will have no issues at all. They will walk through a... A cold, uh, like a mild cold-like symptoms and uh, have no other issues. About 15 may have some problems from moderate and about 5 will get into a critical kind of a situation. So more or less things are fairly uh, under, under control. 
and that's the way the numbers are going to play out. So when we look at these images uh, on our television screens, uh, people rushing to hospitals, people unable to breathe, people not having access to remdesivir or oxygen or beds, uh, how do you look at these images and the situation in our armed forces, sir? There is no doubt that the numbers are huge. Our population is large. And therefore, even given the normal percentages of 85% or 10% or 5%, the percentage converts into large numbers. But I am pretty certain that from the calls that I receive and the kind of patient that we see, that uh, there is a lot of panic among the population and people need to calm down on this, make sure that things are under control and they react appropriately. Okay. Sir, are you thinking of the weeks and months ahead? As far as the armed forces are concerned, uh, we hear mobile oxygen generation plants are being acquired uh, for military hospitals in your appreciation is the worst yet to come, sir. Uh, when we look at other countries, we know that other major countries have had issues with the second wave, third wave, and even fourth wave. So I see no reason why we're going to be different and we will not face third or fourth waves. So this is not the end of it. And therefore, we are preparing for the long haul and making arrangements that we are well prepared for any further waves. So that actually sounds extremely scary. Uh, India was able to come out of the first wave relatively better. Second wave is tough. Uh, and it's it's going to last some time and then the third wave and god forbid then even a fourth wave so how long in your appreciation will we remain masked up sir difficult to guess but end of this year till the end of this year at least we remain masked up so when does this wave peak in your appreciation the facilities that the army is setting up in, in your appreciation, because last year we, we dismantled uh, this 1,000 bed facility. All the facilities that are being set up, they should remain in place and perhaps continue to be augmented this year and next year? Oh, these facilities will continue and we'll see as the patient loads, uh, patient load uh, decreases, we'll obviously scale it down, but that is going to take time, as I said. It's going to last for some time. As far as the duration of the current wave is concerned, the modeling is showing that it's going to continue at least till the end of the peak will not come before the end of this month. But I also know that the peak will only be seen once we descend on the other side. So we have to wait. We have to wait. So the armed forces, they're giving an extension to short service commission doctors, so short service commission yes. officers who are doctors. So you will have approximately 300 additional hands on the deck. So yes. is this your wargaming for the next six months or is this your wargaming till the end of the year or could last into early next we are, year? We are, we are looking at end of this year and that's why we have given extension up to 31st December for all persons who are to retire in this month. Okay, so at least till the end of this year, you will need all hands on the deck. That's your appreciation, absolutely. sir. Absolutely, absolutely. In general public, youngsters are getting infected quite a bit but armed forces the situation you say is very different is it only because of discipline that youngsters uh, out on the cv street did not follow the kind of discipline whether it was masking up going out for parties or festivities uh, in your appreciation is parties and meetings and all of that is a strict no-no for how long i think it will continue like this for a couple of months more at least and uh, till the doctors give a all clear signal i think the youngsters have to be under control and make sure that they don't do all this inappropriate behavior also also as i said earlier vaccination is very important it has worked among the young population of armed forces it will work for youngsters in the streets also sir this desperate scramble from for remdesivir and other drugs that we see on the civil street um, is that also the same protocol that's being followed by the army or the armed forces do you need these drugs how are the armed forces treating their patients? Is it different from what's happening outside? We follow evidence-based medicine and remdesivir, where it is required, it is used, and we understand uh, the actual uh, value of this particular drug. So every patient doesn't require it. And similarly for other medicines like tocilizumab and all, you see a mad rush happening outside uh, in the city street, which I don't think is uh, correct. And if we should leave the decision of uh, administering these very expensive and uh, critical drugs to the treating doctors. Problem is that the relatives, the uh, um, they, 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 they press the doctors to you know give the drug as if 
is uh, remdesivir is a is a panacea for all things it is not what would your advice be to those who are like desperately rushing to hospitals the moment they test positive uh, my advice would be not to panic first of all uh, various protocols are available keep an eye on the saturation maintain good uh, uh, practices and things are going to be fine for 85% of individuals is there a lot of pressure even on military hospitals at this point of time sir uh, you know there was a report about a veteran uh, who passed away uh, because he could not get access to hospital either in time uh, or, for, or for what reason sir are we likely to get overwhelmed in the coming weeks and months sir uh, i hope we don't get overwhelmed and because we are expanding and augmenting our services all over getting more beds more oxygen supplies and uh, things like that uh, what happened was very unfortunate and now we are given instruction that no veteran will be turned away from any hospital we'll make sure that oxygen is available for all and uh, is there is there a situation that uh, if there are not enough beds people may have to be treated elsewhere uh, you know like the way we saw in some foreign countries that they got completely overwhelmed in the coming weeks and months uh, are we gearing up to deal with the situation that we don't get overwhelmed uh, and the army is able to provide all that is required not just to soldiers and veterans because you're also deployed uh, at the line of control and the line of actual control sir yes we have our important uh, role to play there as well and therefore we are stretched at the moment but i'm pretty certain that we we'll meet the challenge sir many thanks for joining me here on india today uh, it's heartening to hear that our soldiers our sailors our airmen they're doing well they've been vaccinated and that's your advice to the rest of the country they should get a jab because that really helps thanks thanks garo that's very important Thank you very much sir many thanks for joining us here on India today thank you so the armed forces remain at the forefront and even as we speak there is a C17 globe master that's flying in four cryogenic tankers from Singapore because there's an acute shortage of oxygen for example in the national capital it continues to grapple with oxygen shortage on friday night 25 people died at delhi's jaipur golden hospital because of this oxygen shortage jaipur golden has now received some oxygen hospital authorities claim that there is 1500 liters of oxygen but that's not enough the prestigious all india institute of medical sciences that too has raised an alarm saying that they're not taking any new patients due to a shortage of oxygen and unavailability of beds several hospitals have flagged oxygen shortage to the administration and the government beds there's a shortage of beds there's a shortage of medicines in this covid crisis several hospitals have approached the delhi high court now taking cognizance of this matter the delhi high court has instructed the center to ensure that 480 metric tons of oxygen is provided to delhi india today's nalini sharma now joins me for more on this story nalini what's the latest in court while the center has been asked to provide 480 metric tons uh, of oxygen to delhi where are the niggles are they still at loggerheads delhi center private hospitals or is a solution emerging Gaurav, you know what's happening is that hospitals across the national capital are approaching the Delhi High Court on a daily basis, saying that they're running out of oxygen. And what the sense I got from all the hospitals that had come up before the High Court in the previous few days as well as today was that the oxygen is being supplied to them almost on a... Uh, immediate requirement basis which means that almost on an hourly basis if they are running out of oxygen the oxygen is being given from the side of the center as well as the delhi government which is not turning out to be sufficient because the hospitals are not even being able to make the 24 hour plans on exactly how they're going to tackle the crisis in the coming 24 hours because they don't have oxygen for 24 hours so keeping that in mind several hospitals approached the delhi high court today they made an unprecedented demand where they said that they they need police protection because soon they're going to reach a stage where they're going to have to start discharging their patients from the hospital which means that it could lead to a law and order situation so in regard to that the high court has ordered that Delhi police should provide protection to the hospitals and the nursing homes in Delhi as and when has been requested by them uh, there is the problem if we have 15000 metric tons of surplus uh, oxygen in the in the east where is the problem uh, in delhi acquired getting it from the east is a solution uh, emerging there from delhi government 
Well, Gaurav, what's happening is, uh, essentially before the High Court is that the central government and the Delhi government are passing the buck to each other when it comes to the question of supplying this oxygen, the transportation and the logistics of this oxygen. So you're right to point out that there is 15,000 metric tons of oxygen lying in the east of India. But how is that oxygen going to be carried from the eastern states to the national capital is the main question. Now, uh, every state, what, from what we're given to understand, is procuring their own oxygen tankers to ensure that this transportation can happen. But Delhi is not being able to do that. And in the High Court, the Delhi government and the center are both passing the buck to each other, giving each other the responsibility for these logistics. At the end of the day, it's the citizens that are suffering, it which was also pointed out. It is the sad situation, yeah. Nalini. For the moment, many thanks for joining me. We will track the story very closely and much more on this at 5 p.m. on India Today. Hello everyone, this is Rahul Kamal here. Hope you enjoyed this video. For the latest news and analysis, like and subscribe the India Today YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated.